welcome to MQW Driving School another video this video is for somebody who want to do the theory test from their home this is the online class for your theory test where we give you the presentation about the theory test with some topics to practice we also help you to understand all the traffic sign and rule and regulation about the road in this theory test so this is the real example watch the theory all right now this is called a theory test workshop now yeah. this design in a way that first for example if you don't know anything about the theory so we will take you from the start to the finish and then we practice the all the subject to things one by one okay so this is just the welcome. So welcome to the TV workshop. This is my detail. You already know me before, so I can skip this one, right? So yeah. these are the three books from which they will ask you these questions on the theory test. The number one book is called the traffic signs. You can get this on your mobile free app, or you can get it from yeah. the government website as well. And you can read it from there as well. Okay. They have a separate uh, one of uh, the topic, which is just about the traffic sign. So this book only will clear you one topic. Right. Okay. Then you have the highway code. So they will ask you some question from the highway code as well. This is also available on the government website free. You know, like if you see in the bottom, where is uh, where I say buy now option. Yeah? yeah. So this is the option where you can just type it and say highway code on the government website latest version and then you will get the, these two books you get free online okay if you're not sure i yeah. can still can help you to send you the link the third book is called official driving essential book now this book also guide you how you can drive the car and this book is also important because some questions in your theory test will come from this book right. but same time this will book will help you to do the driving as well because if you notice they want you to do the theory test and uh, has a perception test before you actually go for the driving test so they want you to to make sure you know all the rule and regulation you know all everything written down in the books properly what is the driving how you handle the car and what is the important thing you need to do it Okay, so that's all technically going to be in this book. Okay, so remember this is the three books. Maybe you need to buy one, but if you're using the apps, that means you don't need to buy the books. Two are free. Third one you don't need to buy. This will cover in your app. Okay, these topics. Yeah. Okay, let's go to the next one. Now, is a little bit about the history of the theory test that one actually they started. They started about 1st of July 1997. Okay. Then they become yeah. like a compulsory thing in the UK that everyone have to do this theory test. Then hazard perception test they designed in 2002. Before it was only the question answers, no video clips, nothing. Okay. Right. Now, because you're already driving with me, so you should know that when you're driving on the road, your eyes always stay on the road and you find the hazard early as possible so you can uh, alter your driving you can go for the rule and regulation online okay yeah. now the requirement wise again you must have to pass this for your practical test that's one of the main requirement and you must have to pass the both theory and the hazard at the same time to clear the whole test if you pass one let's say you pass the uh, hazard perception but not the theory questions it still count as a fail so you have to pass the both parts at the same day. Okay. Yeah. So, so that, that is your main requirement. And without this, you cannot book your practical test. So this is your main requirement. Okay. So let's come to the next one. Now I'm going to ask you some basic questions. Do you know who normally set this driving test? You know, the name of yeah. the organization. No. Okay. They call it DVSA. Okay, I'll give you the answer in the next sheet. Okay, do you know how much it cost you to book the test? Okay, I'll give you the hint. It must be in your 20s. 25. 
uh, they reduced it now to 23. Okay. Mm. So they give you like a two pound discount now. It used to be 25. Okay. Yeah. And do you know where you can go and do the test? Location? No. Okay. This is called a Pearson Center. They, DBs, they have their own um, like partner where they take the test on the behalf of the DVSA. So you go in that place. This is in Leeds, in a, a nearby Hedro, nearby the city center. Yeah. Okay. And if you go to the Bradford for your job or something, then you can even can go to a different center who have the earliest booking option. Okay. Like I did. So you don't have to sit particularly in your area. Okay. Yeah. And you know how they will be taken? Is a paper or computer based? Paper. No, it's all going to be computer based. It will be okay. multiple choice questions, but they will take it on the computer. So there will be no pen and paper. Okay. Yeah. So just all computer based. Okay. This is why we're using the computer so you can see how they will work. Alright. Okay. Do you know how much uh, marks you must have to take in the theory test? And has a perception? Oh no. <laughs> no way. Okay, this this is your normally your answers. Okay. So the first answer is actually the DVSA is called Driver and Vehicle Standard Agency. They are the organization who is actually taking this test from you. Okay. And this is the same DVSA who's going to take your practical test. 23 is the fee. Okay, you're right. It used to be 25. So now it's 23. And you yeah. only book it on your government website. We can also All can right, book yeah. this test for you on your behalf if you need it. But if you don't need any help, then you can even can book by yourself. Yeah. Okay. Now this is a computer based test from the government website. Okay. So this is more like a DVSA certificate. Okay. They issue the certificate on the same day of your test. When you pass, they tell you the result on the same day. They issue the paper, which way they call certificate and you get it on the same day. You need 43 marks to pass your theory questions. So you only can get wrong seven in total. Right. And then for the hazard perception, you need to pass with 44 marks out of 75. Okay, this is more like a 60% mark. So you have a chance to do some wrong, but 44 is a pass. Once you get your certificate, it is valid for two years. Right. So once you get your certificate of passing your theory test, you must have to clear your practical test within the two year time. If you don't pass your yeah. practical test in two years, you have to sit for the theory test again. Okay, so that's something you have to consider. Yeah. Okay, so let's go to the next page now. Okay, now this is a little bit introduction, same as before. You will get total 50 questions in theory test. Out of 50, you need to give 43 right answers. Okay. Seven is the only margin. Seven you can do wrong. Okay. Then they give you this question from all the different topics. They are normal about 14 topics and, uh, and case study. Okay. They also give the case study as well. So this yeah. case study is something like they would give you the scenario or someone is driving you on the place, what you do in this time. And then they will ask you some questions about it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now for the hazard perception, we come to the separately for this 50 questions. You technically have one hour, 47 minutes. Yeah. For 57 yeah. minutes, my mistake. So one hour. So spend only about maximum one minute on one question. This is a very common mistake uh, people do that they try to give the answer quickly as possible and they don't use the one minute. They try to give the answer within a seconds. Yeah. 
and that way they don't think they don't read it properly and they give the wrong answers so yeah. you must need to keep your time watch with you or you can see the time on the computer and think properly then give the answer because you have one minute for one question take your full time in the test so for example sometime people what they do when they finish the uh, this uh, theory test they finish in 15 minutes so that's possible so like read the question answer give answer because the multiple choice and you have to click the mouse so that can be done very quickly so people try to finish this in 15 minutes and then when they get the result they get failed sometimes they fail just because of one mouse right so spend a good time before you give answer that's important okay yeah okay so this is your topics number 1 accident so they will ask you some questions what you will do in the case of accident if you see somebody fall down in the accident or collision what you do what you present what insurance police who to call you know all these kind of things yeah number 2 alertness when you drive the car on the road how much you was alert and also they will ask you that what factors can reduce your alertness like uh, you thinking something you using the mobile phone you drinking while driving you are using your uh, sat nav you using your stereo you know like or distraction in the car by chatting with other people not paying attention on the road yeah, yeah. So, or drink driving or medication or a drug driving all these kind of alertness yeah, yeah. then number 3 will be your attitude okay how much you actually paying attention on the rule and regulation and your attitude towards the road and towards the safe driving and they can give you yeah. some kind of case study question that okay if you do this what will be your first action yeah and then so they can see your attitude as a driver yeah okay so like you are not uh, getting into the road range you are not making people angry by overtaking or driving aggressively or beeping the horns to somebody yeah these kind of things yeah. number 4 is the documentation they will ask you some question about the car documents right this they can ask you that what main document you must need to provide if the police ask you okay if you fall down in the accident when you need to provide the document if there is not there how much time you need it to go to the police station and provide them uh, yeah you talk about about the road tax mot uh, car insurance what is the minimum cover you can buy as a car insurance these kind of questions so everything about the papers of the car or important things yeah okay now this hazard awareness is again when you driving on the road what kind of hazard awareness you can see on the road okay so these are the yeah. kind of question they can ask you in has a perception again they want to see how much you aware to look ahead into the road right okay number 6 they can ask you some question about the motorway rule and regulations yeah what is the maximum speed on the motorway if you break down your car what procedure you will follow how you will call the breakdown service do you going to change the tire by yourself are you going to call the recovery service okay when you see the police on the motorway yeah. how why they call a motorway police what authority they have if you see some signs on the top of your head on the motorway how you behave which line is which one if you see the crosses on the one line what that mean you drive there or you don't drive there okay so all yeah. the rules now number 7 other type of vehicles other type of vehicles will be your lorry truck buses moped cycle motorbike disabled cars rubbish cleaners bin collections okay yeah how much room you need to give them if they you know how you will pass them how you overtake them all these kind of things okay now number 8 road and traffic sign so this is where you will use that book you know the traffic sign book so this yeah. is number 8 this is where you will get know all the traffic signs their shapes their color where you found them what sign is what which places you find this sign which places you find this signs yeah 
what they are, what they mean. So that's go over here. This is a big topic. Number nine, rule of the road. Where you should be driving on the left side of the road all the time. If you use the roundabout, which lane you should keep it. If you go Europe, which lane you keep it. All kind of rule and regulation of the road. Okay. Yeah. Then this is number 10 is your safety margin. How far you should be driving with the other cars. What normal distance you should keep with the front car. You remember we talk about the following distance. Two car gap, yeah. four car gap, 10 car gap. So this is like margins. The number 11 will be your safety of your vehicle and motor car. For example, if your car driving on the ice road, how you can control the car in the ice, how you can control the skid of the car, right? So how your yeah. car or handle, you know, like sometimes people can get confused. This theory test is for the motorbike and for the car at the same time. So they're still asking you some kind of question. It's like a for like a motorbike, but you are not have any experience of the motorbike. Second, you are driving the automatic car with me, but this is going to ask you the question about the manual car. And you don't know yeah. anything about the manual car. No. Okay. So that's another reason. Sometimes these question answers you don't know because you don't have any experience. But theory test is designed in a way that they will ask you a general question like a manual car. For yeah. anyone on the road, which can be maybe you are on the road on your car or maybe you're on the road on your bike. Right. Okay. Now, next one is number 12. How you handle the car in the case of emergency, emergency brake, how your car will behave, where the car will skid, all these kind of things. Yeah. Number yeah. 13 is like a vehicle motor loading. You know, like if you have to tow the car, in the future, if you have to put a lot of stuff in the yeah. car, you have to check your tire pressure. You have to distribute the load equally. Then, you know, the unequal load will be shifting suddenly one place to other place. If you do the hard brakes, so all these kind of handling of the car and loading of the car. So you as a driver are always going to be responsible for the car loading and handling. Yeah. Okay. Number 14 is very simple. As you can see with the name vulnerable road users. So that's again, talk about uh, deaf people, blind people, people with the dogs, yeah, with the moped, yeah. scooter, disability, walking disability, and other disability which you cannot see, right? How you can identify yeah. if they are with the stick, what color stick, if they're dog, what color strap on the dog, okay? All these kind of things and how you can spot them early as possible. So if you look on the top, it said total 731 question. Okay. They are total yeah. 731 question will come from these topics. Okay. But they only give you 50 random. Okay. So total are this much. You get 50. You need to take 43 as a passing marks minimum. Okay, so this is why you must have to cover all the topics separately to understand the logic. Then doesn't matter whichever question they give you, you will understand the logic and then the things will be easily covered. Yeah. Okay, now I'm jumping to the next one now. So for example, this is we call accident. Now, when you talk about the accident, it also covered the first aid inside the accidents. Yeah. So for example, if you have to, have you done ever any first aid course at your work? Yeah. Okay. You know, remember when they say that you need to pump their chest with fingers, yeah. how much pressure you give to them, how much pressure to, for the adult, how much pressure for the um, child, your baby, infant. Then um, yeah. how many second pressure, how much inch you have to press it. So these questions will come in this one. Right. Okay. So just take example of the question number one. What should you do if you see a large box fall from a lorry onto the motorway and you're driving behind them? Okay. Uh, yeah. 
so this accident is actually as a different kind of accident it's, it's not like you hit somebody yeah. okay now they want to check how safely you can decide what to do so now think about yourself driving on a motorway 70 mile road behind the lorry something fallen down from the lorry driver did not notice it only you have seen it now they will give you some options as a multiple choice they can give you the option that you will stop the car and you will pick the box and put it on the side second option they can give you that you will try to drive very fast go near the door of the driver of the lorry and try to wave him and tell him oh you something fallen down third option they can give you that you will stop the car on the hard shoulder on a service and find the sos phone call and call them and tell them what happened yeah right so they give you the option and you need to find the safe option so think right. about it safety is one of the main key of your driving you know that if you stop the car to pick it people will hit you from the back you yeah. cannot put your life in the risk so that's totally fall choice you can't choose this one you're not going to drive fast at any reason to tell the driver when the driver going to look at you and you look into the driver who will look the road ahead you will be hit each other somebody you, this can't be no possible okay yeah second you can stop the car on a hard shoulder and ring them but maybe you already seen the driver stopping and doing this so then you don't need to do this right okay so they give you like a picture so you must have to make a good picture in your mind what they're telling you then see yourself as a driver in that seat and think what you will do yeah and always pick the wrong answers first you have to see the choice and then see this is not possible this cannot happen this is unsafe that way you will be very easy for that thing now we're not going to go all this thing but let's say second um, example is this one that you are traveling uh, under the tunnel for example okay then in the tunnel sometimes is a very congestion then they will say which light you need to switch on if you go in the tunnels tunnel is normally dark so you need to switch on the lights then which light you will own then is about the motorcycle crash if you see the rider is laying down on the floor what help you will do with the riders are you going to remove his helmet or not if you do it what can happen okay then um, if you say like um, any uh, let's say if you see some accident in front of you what's the best thing you should do should you go and give some kind of water to the people or you going to remove yeah. the helmet are you going to remove them away from the main road to the side are you going to start picking the debris are you going to call the ambulance if you see somebody already did the um, call to the ambulance then what next you can do how you can control the blood to the wound are you going to give them a cold drink hold drink are you going to assure them they are out of the shock okay so that's uh, yeah. these kind of questions okay and then cpr the first aid one so let's see the picture okay so this is the example pictures now can you see the one guy laying down on the floor yeah then they will say which is the recovery position you better put him on so for example if it's bleeding then you know okay how much you can raise this arm so the bleeding don't go further and you can stop the bleeding how much pressure you can give to his bone to stop the pressure yeah so you providing somebody a first aid on the road but that kind of situation will be when you the first one on the scene of incident you the first one have seen it some question will be there that you went to the incident but you are not the first person people are already there they already handling it yeah okay now second picture is about the motorbike again on what condition you should remove his helmet what condition you can remove him from the middle of the road to the side of the road how you can warn the other traffic and say that some accident so they don't go and drive over him so yeah. you as a civilian what kind of safety measures you can take that time okay the next yeah. third picture is like a police 
if you went some place and you see the police already dealing with some kind of incident on the road yeah then you know yeah. what sign the police is telling you to do are the police telling you to make a u turn and go some different location or they diverting the traffic or you are you going to slow down your car too much are you going to keep traveling in the same speed okay the next picture is also the same thing where they close the road the whole traffic is jammed okay now the next picture is where the man is putting this triangle this is called a hazard triangle when his car is break down how far he should be keeping his triangle on the road so other people can see the car is break down yeah okay so these kind of things will be there oh where i am in one back okay now the next question about this one is they give you the scenario like for example you trying to cross the level crossing and then suddenly your car is struck in the crossing and your car is not starting anymore yeah what you will do as a safety you will leave the car you try to push the car to go away you going to try to start the car or you going to ring somebody you going to try to stop the train you know all these kind of things right and next one is the first aid how much pressure you give to somebody okay okay now the next one is called alertness now we can go to the pictures now that will be more easy for you to understand rather than reading this pages now yeah yeah so let's say alertness what can reduce your alertness on the road when you driving so if you see the pictures touching your mobile phone while driving distract you touching your sat nav and setting the journey while driving can distract you on the road so that mean you are not alert while traveling yeah. okay if you see the third picture then you see there is a park car on the road and you trying to come out at the same time and there is another car trying to overtake at the same time remember we done this moving and stopping exercise yeah and we did that moving at angle you taking the car out behind somebody but at the same time someone is trying to overtake the other car yeah okay then uh, if you look on the bottom pictures did you notice that this is more like a picture to tell you about the blind spots oh, ah yeah. okay so if you see abc picture where they say abc so this picture yeah. is trying to tell you that you got three pillars on your car which block your vision so then you have a blind spot for example when you come out from the t junction who is more vulnerable on the junction on the main road which you cannot see any idea uh, a bike yeah no. yeah motorbike bicycles yeah because this pillar will block your visions so this picture is more about the picture for your car but yeah. if you look on the lorry this picture is more about the lorry have a different blind spot car have a different blind spots this is the main reason when you driving next to the lorry you don't drive in the lorry blind spots you drive in a location when there is no gray area okay yeah so you always drive in the place when there is no blind spot so driving too close to the lorry from behind you are in the blind spot of the lorry the lorry driver cannot see you so you are not in a good spot it's not a good location yeah okay now let's take an other example then i give you some uh, idea of doing the ancestry as well so attitude so this will be like expected 39 question in totals about the attitude so attitude about so see through the pictures again you have a bad attitude for example that you try you always drive the car back of other people too closely without even thinking what if they do the break yeah so that way you cannot say it will be a good distance so you, this is called a attitude issue right. the person is actually not thinking about 
for the future and driving behind somebody, not thinking what they do the break. Second, when you're approaching to different kind of pedestrian crossings, Now, when you see, when you approach the different kind of pedestrian crossing, then again is more like how you approach. Are you planning in advance? Are you watching in advance? Are you looking this pedestrian crossing is uh, uh, for people for on the foot, on the bike, is for the horses, pelican, token, equestrian, toucan, puffing? Yeah. How you approach? Are you approaching too cautious, approaching too fast, ignoring things, ignoring the what's coming up next in the next picture if you see the guy is trying to overtake the lorry yeah. then are you going to overtake the lorry when it's not safe and also if you see the red color that mean are you going to go back in your lane too quickly in front of him and force him to do the sudden break because of your driving behavior yeah or are you getting angry on somebody and beeping him from the back and making him more aggressions Right, and if you see the other guy is doing the road range, if you see someone doing this with you, how you behave, right? Then yeah. on the bottom, if you see that when you're passing the horses, how much room you should be giving to the horses? Do you beep them? Do you rave there? Do you give plenty of room for them? Do you pass them very fast? Then you got the doctor cars, is also known as the blue light emergencies yeah. they will ask you the color of the doctor all the other lights colors are blue but doctor have a green color they're still emergency but the doctor color is green everyone else blue okay yeah okay that's what we got now so next one is documentation. As I said, they will ask you some question about the vehicle documentations. Yeah. For example, they ask you about the road tax, insurance, MOT, which policy you can buy minimum. What is the excess you have to pay as an admin fee? How many points you can get if you don't do all these things? Are you allowed to drive the car without the road tax? If you don't drive the car, how you can tell the DVSA? And then uh, who is responsible to pay the uh, road tax? Who is responsible to take care of MRT? How, how long the MRT certificate is valid for? How much the insurance certificate valid for? Okay. So yeah. these are the questions. Again, this is one of the very common mistake students do because whenever you are driving the car with us or anywhere else, you normally don't fall down in these questions. Yeah, you have no experience yeah. because maybe your dad buy the car so he know how to do this thing, but you don't have any experience. Okay, yeah. if you see the page uh, number one, the picture number one, certificate of motor insurance. When you buy the insurance, they give you the insurance for one year which you can pay in uh, all all clear you can pay all the money in one go or you can pay them monthly basis okay yeah. some people pay in the quarterly three months as well they issue the certificate and this is the certificate which is legal and that automatically update on the government website and also on the police database that your yeah. car is insured if your car is not insured and you're driving on the road police can stop you and can give you the points on your license okay the next document is called the v5 document or also known as car registration document so this car registration document is like a receipt that you are the owner of the car so whenever you buy some new car they will give you this paper as a proof that you are the owner of the car any changes you do in this page, you must have to tell the DVSA. Like change of your name, change of your address, 
or any change of your health or if you selling the car or something you still use this form to tell the dvsc yeah okay if you look on the bottom now this is the online system for the dvsa to give you the option to say that um, how you can check your card is properly tax and your card is properly insured and your card is properly have mot certificate okay so when you put your registration number on the government website, it's called a MOT and tax checker. Then they will tell you that your car is valid until that time. And if it's green and take them in your fine. These two things is still a responsibility for the owner of the car. Okay. That's the responsibility of the owner of the car. If you don't put the tax of the car, they can clamp your car. Can you see the clamp on tax vehicle? You maybe have seen this kind of clamp sometime on the streets. Yeah. Okay. If you look on the last picture, the white page is called MOT test certificate. Okay, one minute. Yeah. So the last picture is called MOT test certificate. So when you go to the garage, like a quick fit, they do this uh, testing for you. It's called your car is road worthy to come on the road. They issue this yeah. certificate and again is valid for one year. Okay. Again, you are not allowed to drive the car if your certificate is not valid. And if your car is out of MOT certificate, the only one way you can drive the car, if you already have an appointment, and you're driving just to take your car to the garage. So that's the only exemption. Okay. So let's jump to the next one. Hazard awareness. So this hazard awareness, what kind of things will make you um, not paying attention on the hazard? So let's say the first picture, maybe the person is old. He, he, yeah. can, he cannot react that quickly. To the hazard his eyesight is weak his reaction time is weak late yeah. you're driving the car without the uh, your uh, glasses if you have to wear one yeah. you are feeling sleepy behind the wheels and you're still not taking a good breaks while driving for a long time and if you want to make yourself a little bit awake what you should do do you going to stop the car and sleep on the motorway on the side on the short shoulder or you go to the services and take a break or you're going to put the window down or you're going to drink two hot drinks or something or red bull okay again if you're in the level crossing and you don't see the sign and you see the light is changing and barriers coming down are you going to speed up how you notice the car is coming which bell they give you what, what you see if the barrier is down what if one side barrier is by mistake is not down? Are you going to use that side to go? How you can be affected by any drug, drink, any medication, which is making you drowsy. How much uh, sleep you already have before you're driving? Are you taking any internal breaks in your driving? Okay. So that's all the example of this chapter. Now let's go to the next one, the motorway. In a motorway, they will ask you these kind of questions. So let's say number one, how many stud lights you can see on the motorway lines? Then they will ask you the color, which color you see. So they are more like a traffic light, red, amber and green. Yeah. Okay. Then they will say where you find them. So red will be on the left side. The last line left side, which means if you move more left is a danger. Okay. The white color come under the center of the lines. So that means you are driving in your own personal lines. The amber one or yellow one, they come on the right hand side near the wall, which divide both of the traffic like a two way traffic. 
and then the green one come for your slip road when you have to leave the motorway from the slip road they come on the slip roads okay and sometimes you get the yellow bright yellow color or different green color if there's some kind of contra flow traffic or sometimes a road work okay they will ask you these kind of questions for, about the stud okay yeah this is the example of the motorway so they're going to ask you the question about if you break down where you stop the car and where you ring the people so this is called sos booth can you see the lady talking on the booth called sos yeah when you pick this booth the booth also have the number so this is the operator will ask you where you are standing so you read the number and tell them this is where I am. So they can identify you on the map where exactly you are. So they can send the service towards you, which can be the police recovery and all done. And you try not to use your mobile phone. You try to save your battery of the phone and you use this phone to ring them is a free phone. Yeah. Okay. Then you are not allowed to sit down in the car when you break down. You have to stand somewhere near your car where you can see your car easily but away from your car not putting yourself any kind of danger okay mm -hmm. yeah. the next one is about uh, uh, can you see the police car on the bottom yeah they call a police control car or police patrol car okay they're still like a police officers they can give you the fines they can they, their duty to keep the traffic flow on the motorway, on the dual carriageway, all that thing. But they have the same rules and regulation like other police. They can stop you, arrest you, all these kind of things. Okay? Yeah. And then another question they can ask you, what is the speed limit of the motorway? What is the speed limit of the dual carriageway? If you are towing the car, what is the maximum speed, speed limit you use after you tow the car? Which is... 10 miles less than the total. So for example, if you drive a car, you drive 70 miles on the motorway. Yeah. But when you tow something, you drive 60 miles on the motorway. Yeah. But this is about the car. But if you are on the buses, coaches, van, and uh, lorry and truck, they drive 60 miles, not 70 on the motorway. Yeah. For, for them is different. But if you look on the other picture, where they say 50 on the top. So these kind of signs you see on the top of the motorway to tell you what speed you drive. So the, whatever they're telling you, you drive only on the speed limit as your maximum limit. Okay. Then can you see the cross next to the 50 sign? Yeah. Then this kind of question they will ask you that what you do if you see the cross. So first of all, this line is like a dead end. You are not allowed to drive in this line. So when you see this, you must move the car in the different line where the line is moving. So for example, right three lines are moving to the 50 mile speed maximum, but left line is blocked. And you are not allowed yeah. to continue on this line anymore when you see this cross sign. And if you see the cross sign on all of them, then you must have to stop the car, don't go further. Maybe there's some kind of accident on the motorway. Right. Okay. They will ask you these questions about the speed, all they say. Can you see the sign in the blue color? Traffic sign in blue color. Yeah. So motorway signs come in the blue color. Okay. All the motorway signs yeah. come in the blue color. And then uh, under this, you can see the stud colors, red, white, green, amber. Yeah. Okay. So these color scheme, they will ask you where you find them, what color they are, or they can trick you by asking you that if you see the, let's say they can say if the weather is not good and you see the yellow on your right, then which lane you are on? If you see the left on uh, is the... If you see the left one is green, which lane you're driving on? Yeah. Okay. So let's go to the next one. 
other type of vehicles in this one if you look on this picture they are talking about the lorry truck buses tram so when you see the bus stop what you start behaving them if you see the lorries turning into the road how far you can stop for them who have the priority how much room they needed do they swing do they swing right before the turn to the left because they need a big room so is this is a good time for you to overtake them or you better wait for them yeah so this is called other type of the vehicles so something you can say they, they are not the cars they are not cycle they are not motorbike they are not car so if you leave these three then all other things comes there especially if you go yeah. to some cities where you see the tram like manchester or scotland edinburgh these kind of cities you go and you see something different which you don't see in your city okay and also yeah. how these vehicle drive what speed they drive which lane they normally drive on how they behave on the road what is the blind spot what can be the danger for you for uh driving behind them too closely on in the blind spots yeah like the picture we seen before yeah. that if you drive behind the lorry too close the driver cannot see you so you are in a vulnerable position okay the next one road and traffic sign this is where you use the book yeah so this is the book again it's called uk traffic signs available free on the government website if you google and say uk traffic signs you will find them in the pdf format online you are also uh, able to download them on your computer and you can go through page by page yeah so what's inside in this one is your traffic and road signs so first of all when you see the sign in the red circle which means you are not allowed to do this they are, they are like your orders for you you should not do this what you should not do this whatever the picture inside that is what they mean you should not do this yeah okay then you got that uh, triangle triangle is your warning The triangle give you the warnings what is coming up ahead how you should be ready for that thing in advance okay so all this comes on that one for example now we going to this one for example i said if you go through all the traffic signs at the same time that should feel like it's very confusing but when you yeah. divide them separately then things becomes bit easy so number 1 sign giving orders number 2 yeah. the sign which give you the warning then you got the signs telling you the directions then the signs are yeah. telling you some kind of information which can be about your street name okay like for example yeah. city center is this way like this kind of information then you got road work signs like a temporary road works going on because this sign is not there all the time only when the road work is there then is there otherwise is not there right then you got other traffic signs okay yeah so let's go to them one by one these are the signs give you orders now the common mistake in this one people only remember them into the red circle people think only the red circle is order for example if you see the second row number 1 where the bike and car yeah. picture is there people think this is the only order and when people see this blue color people don't think this is a order but remember the way you read the traffic sign is like a sentence if they are telling you to do something as a must 
is still count as your order. Yeah. For example, when you go to the T junction, you see sometimes giveaway signs and you sometimes see the stop sign. So technically the stop sign is not in the round circle, right? It's a hectogram, but still this yeah. is your order. Right? If you look yeah. on the arrow, you know, the first row, last one yeah. is telling you keep your car to the left. So see how affirmative is telling you something. So you still count as your order. Keep left, keep your car on the left lane. Right? If you look there, yeah. row one, second one, say 30 miles. But you yeah. say 30 miles in the blue color, which means you should not drive the car less than 30 miles on this road. Right. So it's still kind of an order because they're telling you must not drive the car less than 30 miles. Okay. Yeah. If you see um, bottom of the 30 number, the blue one, you say the yeah. blue color with the red circle with the stripe with the red. That means you are not allowed to stop the car here. You know, like we did the topic called uh, safe and convenient location. Yeah. So that is where you say this is not a safe and convenient location for you to stop. So you should not stop. Right. So the way you read the board, the way you take the information from the board, if you think this kind of sign is telling me something not to do it or must do it, it still count your orders. So yeah. order does not have to be in the right circles. Okay. So that's a very yeah. common mistake people do in the test. They take it like this is not order, but actually is order. So if you look at the last one, you say bus only allowed to come from the front and two lanes are going towards the north. And you should not do anything different than it say on the board. Is it clear? Yeah. So that's again like an order. Okay. So let's take a next example. Warning signs. So anything come under the triangle, they are your warning. What warning they are giving you is that actually the picture in the triangle. So number one, they say the first one is the triangle is actually the other way around. The point yeah. is down. So what do you think this will be? You see them on their T junctions. Yeah. So what sign is this then? Okay. They are the giveaway. So they are giving you the warning. Giveaway is coming up. Stop 100 yards. But instead of the giveaway, it will be a stop sign maybe. That's why there's a stop 100 yards. So means stop sign is coming in the 100 yards. Normally they put this kind of board a little bit near the bend where you are unable to see your junction. So they put this near the bend so that you get advanced warning for your junction which can be crossroad junction or t junctions okay now ford yeah. ford sign is where you see for example if you're traveling under the tunnel and tunnel is uh, flooded with water or heavy rain last night so this ford means there will be a water you must need to test your brake if you pass under the water okay the next say you finish your dual carriageway, two lanes becoming back to the one lane or two lanes becoming back to one lane. Yeah. Okay. So whatever picture you see, this is what we got. So for example, the last triangle say is a T junction. Yeah. Before this is say like a tunnel. Yeah. yeah. Other one is the humps. And this is also like a warning for your bend, the black and white. Okay, so let's go to the next one. Directions. So these signs giving you the directions, direction where to go, your city name, your journey name, 
where you want to go from the roundabout, from the junction, how far you are, how much time it will take you to reach there, how many miles left to get there. Yeah. Then you get some kind of color. The blue color is for your motorway. Then you yeah. got green color, which is for your uh, ring roads, primary roads. Yeah. Okay. Then you get. Um, Then you're getting that the black one is like a diversions. Black and white, blue, sorry, the yellow and black is a diversions, diversion route. Then you got the brown one, the tourist route. White color is your uh, smaller roads, non primary roads. Yeah. So they're directing you for some places. So they're called as like, your direction signs. You get this in your driving test as well when they say, can you follow this sign in your independent driving? Okay, should we go next? Yeah. They are your information signs. Signs from which you're just getting the information. You don't have to do anything about them. It's your information because after the information, then maybe you have to do something. Yeah. So for example, the second picture in the blue color from the row number one, telling you that you will join the road if you come from the left. So be care conscious and which lanes are there and blah. Number three on the first line is telling you which lane you should be driving because left lane is going to become a dead end and only the buses are allowed to go there further. So if you thinking to go straight, you better change your lane in a good time. Okay, the next information is about the camera. Then you are not allowed to stop. Tourist, you maybe have seen the bus lane, cycle lane, taxi yeah. lane. Then maybe you have seen this in uh, two plus lane in the Leeds, Hosford areas. Yeah. Near the Cuxtall. Two way system, one way system, meeting traffic sign, tourist information. Yeah. Okay. Now the next one, road works. They are called a temporary signs. When there is the road work, you will see them there. If there is no road work, you maybe don't see them on a daily basis. Again, even the road work also come in your red circles, triangle shapes, in the information shape telling you what to do, like a blue sign telling you to keep to the left. So that's like order. 50 miles yeah. telling you the order, don't drive more than 50. Even this uh, 80, 800 yards picture also say that two lanes going straight, but right two lanes are dead and don't go there. Don't drive in that lane. Okay. So making you yeah. informate. This is called the other traffic signs, which you get it from other people or other kind of signs. So for example, if you see the picture number one, cycle is also telling you some kind of signs with his hand. Yeah. Driver also telling you some signs out of the window of his car. When he's turning yeah. right, so if you see the bike and car, when they're turning right, the signs are same for bike and the car. Yeah. But if you want to turn left, cycle can say left very easily, but the driver cannot. So driver going to make a circle in the air. Uh, right. This question can come in your test. How the driver tells that he is turning left. So he will use the same right hand out of the window making anti-clockwise circles or clockwise circle and tell that you're turning left and cycle in the car telling you that you're slowing down in the same order hand up and down that means you're slowing down yeah okay so i give this driver picture separately as well how they tell they're turning left in the blue color car then you should know the sequence of the traffic light. We already done this in your test, uh, normal driving lessons as well. The red come first, then after that, red in, and, and then green, and then Go. steady amber, and then back to red. Okay, so that's sequence of the light. Then, yeah. then you can see Next sign says the traffic light is not working. So they put the cross sign on it. Yeah. So that's still like information for you. That you have to deal the junction with caution and safety because light is not working. Uh, 
okay then you got the police is telling you what to do stop go stop whatever yeah yeah and if you look the last one under the police one then you got the road marking is also the information for you double yellow lines double red lines triangle on the floor yellow box solid line broken line double broken line single broken line solid lines if you look on the road as well there is a proper solid line which also give you some kind of information which is do not cross the line so that's also like information so road marking also give you the informations okay so not just signs okay so we have done up till 8 do you want to take a break are you happy or if you want to continue Okay, let's go next. Now, rules of the road. Now, in rule of the road, they will say everything about the driving actually. So, when you drive on the road, it's actually like a rule of the road. Yeah. So, number one picture, they will ask you that: Are you allowed to stand the car in uh, the yellow box painted on the floor? yeah so then your answer will be no then after that they will say on what conditions you are allowed the car to stop on the yellow box yeah then you will say okay if i am turning right and my right turn is clear so for example on the right street where you going there is no car there if you look on the picture number 1 this car's green color standing in the box he want to turn right Yeah. But the street he is turning in, there is nobody there in that street, so his street is clear. Yeah. That is the only way he can stand there. Otherwise, he is not allowed to stand on the yellow box. He must need to keep it clear. The next picture is about the rule of the roundabouts. Which lane you should be using to turn left? Which lane you should be using to go straight? Which lane you should be using to turn right? if there is a cyclist on the roundabout which lane the cycle should keep yeah are you using the roundabout clockwise or anti clockwise okay so these kind of things comes on this topic now if you, the police stop you what you have to present to the police your license you have to present them then they can check your car mot road tax road insurance your tires what is the legal limit of your tires are you drink driving are you drug driving are your lights yeah. are working properly when you are on the road is your headlight is working is why your fog light is on right another one is like a meter zone where you are allowed to park where you are not allowed to park if you are allowed to park what day and time you are allowed to park what time you are allowed to park okay then if you yeah. look on the bottom one the green car is overtaking the red color or brown color car then uh, how you overtake them what time you are allowed to pass the line and go in other people lines yeah okay then uh, what is the speed limit of the road which is a national speed limit sign with the black stripe with the white background rule of the one way system how you can identify is a one way road then you got the next one is like um, if you get that uh, level crossing what signs you can see there what road marking you see there which lane you should keep where you should stop what you should notify are you allowed to stand and uh, park on the disabled boxes parking on the yeah. motorway you should be driving on which lane all the time if you look on the down one then you see the cycle there is a special blue color board telling you this is a cycle lane what time you are allowed to drive in a cycle lane what time you are not allowed to drive in a cycle lane how you can identify the cycle lanes there are there any solid lines or broken lines then you got this red three stripes called 3 to 1 this is like uh, you getting into the hazard area and you got a slip road and they telling you you getting closer to it like 3 to 1 3 stripes two stripe one stripe Yeah. Like you getting closer to it, yeah. You can see them again in the dual carriage way. You see them in a the motorway and a normal road sometime as well. Then, if you're parking the car on the night time, where you should park the car, the best place 
where there is a light so there is less chances someone can steal something from your car your car should be yeah. more visible if you park the car at the night time where there is no lights which light you should be uh, keeping on like your small bulbs which call a side light parking light yeah okay. so that's your rule of the roads okay the next one is called safety margins now in the safety margin how you should be driving the car with safety on the road what margins you must keep so for example the picture number 1 they're talking about if you drive the car in a place where there is the chances for your car to skid then they will say how you know how you can control the skid okay so if you look in the picture if your back of the car skid to the right hand side you also steer the steering towards the right hand side to make it back to straight okay i will when we teach you the driving lessons we also teach you this but we unable to take you some place where you actually going to skid and we will help you do this is a special course which people sometimes take the course after they pass the test how they can control the skids if actually it happened to them ever yeah okay but we can give you the information so at least for the safe side you know how to do this next picture which you already doing in your driving lessons that what is your 2 second gap looks like when you driving behind somebody so if you look on the red and yellow car picture number 2 yeah so this is a safe distance in a good weather but when the weather is uh, wet rainy then you keep it 4 second when is going to be snow 10 second so yeah. that's your margin then they're talking about abs if you see the third picture in the first row if you yeah. car have a abs brake is called anti lock braking system they will ask you this questions in the theory yeah. this anti lock braking system will help you that you can do the brake and you can do the steering at the same time if you see the picture this guy is actually doing the braking and turning the right steering and going in that place but if you yeah. don't have anti lock braking system in the gray area he is trying to do the brake but he unable to do the steering so that is the more chances he can hit the front car that he cannot save the front car then the car on the on the ice and snow and is skidding because he maybe is not pressing the brake in a good time or is pressing it too hard or leaving it too late to do the brake on the ice So that way he's having a more chances to skid his car. Okay? So that is yeah. your uh, how early you should do brake, how cautious you should be on the snow, you should be driving on the snow or not. And can you see the car is passing under the water? This is where you see the Ford warning signs in the triangle. Right. Okay? because yeah. once you driving the car into this kind of water your brakes not going to be work that good they are wet brakes so you must have to test your brake properly yeah okay the next picture when you drive on uphill and downhill how much power the car need which gear the car need so this is more like a um manual car lesson so you need to be in the gear 1 when you go up the hills or you can call it the lower gears right car take more power when you go down the hill car don't take more much power so you can stay in the higher gear but the car will be fast you must have to cover your brake for downhill but keeping yeah. the brake for too long in downhill can make the brake too warm or heat right then also they can ask you the question about when you park the car on to uphill or downhill where you should turn the wheel to save yourself not to roll back or roll forward so for the up hill you do it towards away from the curve yeah and when you downhill you do towards the curve 
Okay. Right. So these kind of information they give it when we'll do the lesson. I will also going to show you this one because you driving the automatic car for you is different. Is auto stop car auto, and normally we teaching you to stop the car with the straight tires. But we will tell you if you drive the manual car in the future, how you can save this. If your handbrake is not working, your tire can help you not to roll back. Yeah. Okay. Then if you see on the last pictures in the bottom. When you're driving on the fog, fog weather, then uh, how much distance you can see clearly, how much speed you should be driving on, and if you're driving on the bend very fast, what can happen? Then you can skid the car on the bend road, like a country lane we did last time. Yeah. Okay, so you must have to slow down on the country lanes in a good time. So that was examples. So they can also can ask you the question about uh, stopping distance braking yeah. distance and thinking distance okay so for example if you're driving on a 20 mile road how much thinking distance you need it how braking distance you need it 30 mile 40 mile 50 60 70 20 is the minimum speed limit of the roads and 70 is the maximum on the motorway and 5 and 10 you see in the car park or residential area. The private yeah. residential areas or uh, like uh, Tesco car park or anything like this. Okay. So this we have to do separately and we have to tell you how you can calculate them. There are some formulas you can, uh, you can do it through them. Okay. Or otherwise you have to remember this. Okay, so this chart is important. You get this in the highway yeah. code book. You know the book I was telling you about the highway code? You also yeah. get this chart over there. Oh, okay. So this is a simple example I'm using to help somebody to remember this. So first of all, if you write down 20 to 70 into the column number one like this, the minimum yeah. road is 20, maximum 70. So you just say 10, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. Or you can even start from 10, 10, 20, 30 like this. Yeah. Okay. You just need to remember some figures and automatically you can cover up the other figures easily. Okay. So for example, if you look on the thinking distance. Yeah. Okay. So give me one second. Sorry. Okay. So if you think of look on the thinking distance. Yeah. Is is this a table of three? So if, if you write down your speed from 10, for example, 10 mile, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, then yeah. what you need to have to write it down in front of the 10, 3 meter in 20, 3 plus 3, 6, 6 plus 3, 9. So it's a table of three. So three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. Now, what you need to remember now is just the breaking distance. Right. So breaking distance, if you say, I'm going to start the 20 from six, right? Yes. Yeah. So first one is not hard to remember. Then yeah. 30 and 40, you say 14 and then 24. Yeah. And then 38, 55, 75. So the breaking distance is only the numbers you need to remember. All right. Then now check the 20 mile speed. If you add thinking distance into the breaking distance, you get the overall stopping distance of your car. So six plus six, 12 meter, or we also known as 40 feet. Yeah. 
this is the place you should be start breaking your car if you're driving on 20 mile and you want to stop the car for the hazard now if you add 30 miles road 9 meter plus 14 you get 23 12 plus yeah. 24 36 so if you remember the braking distance all other figures you can get very easily if you know what to do so thinking plus braking equal to stopping this is the formula thinking plus braking equal to stopping and thinking is like a table of three three plus six nine 12, 15, like this. And 24, yeah. and road speed, you know, is always go 10 by 10 mile, 10 mile, 10 mile, like this. So 10, 20, 30, 40. So this you don't need to remember. Thinking is very simple. Table of three. Braking, you need to remember. And when you plus the braking into thinking, you get the stopping distance. Yeah. Okay. So you keep practicing this, and this question can come in your test. Now let's go to the next one, number 11. This is the safety of your vehicle and motorcycles if you drive. Now this is about uh, maintenance of your car. Yeah. Like how often you go to the garage, if you find some kind of leak in your engine oil, braking oil or something, are you going to repair yourself or you go to your uh, mechanic? How often you go? Are you going to drive the car without servicing? Who is responsible for the servicing? Blah, blah, blah. Plus, if your car is new, uh, how first one, when, when is the first MOT, you can do it. Okay. If you look on the yeah. second picture, this guy is taking a responsibility again, his eyes on the road, his hand on the wheel, which I'm teaching you as well. You're wearing the seat belt, your phone is off, you're watching the speed signs, you are thinking about you're driving in the build-up area. Yeah. Then this is more about uh, understanding about a little bit about your car. You know, like a little bit capacity of your car, what the your actual car can do. Yeah. If you look on the next picture, then you say where you should be parking your car, where you more safe, your car is more safe. No one going to steal something from your car. Right? Yeah. So for example, how, how you should be parking your car when the thing should be away from the eyes of your thieves not like you leaving your mobile phone in front of the driver's seat and you're going inside so someone want to steal the mobile phone or you leave the sat nav driving in the car and you leave the sat nav is very costly or you leave some kind of bag in your car where someone want to steal it yeah. the next picture tell you about um, your head strain which you done in the cockpit and control lesson the lesson number one that um, why it is there, why it's important to adjust it properly, what can happen if you don't adjust. If you look on the picture, you can also can see he can crack his neck very easily if he had restraint is not there in the case of emergency. Yeah? yeah. If you look on the next picture, then it's, it's more like a car park. So you should be parking your car always in a secure place, in the secure environment, secure car park. You must have to follow the signs in the car park, how you enter, how you exit, how you pay. Look on the height of the car park that your car is not big heighted, that you're going to hit the pillars or something. Or yeah. you're parking the car where there is a plenty of lights. So your car is in a safe location when you park the car. Okay. Now, if you look on down the last um, third row where the tire picture is. So they tell you the minimum thread of the tire. What is the minimum limit of the tire? How you can check them, which is 1.6 millimeter. What is the air pressure you should keep in the car? If you look on the next picture, tire have a little less inflation. What can happen? How your tire will be worn if you have more pressure in the tire, less pressure in the tire. Are you going to drive the car with the puncture tire, less uh, tire pressure in it? What can happen if you have a puncture while you're driving on the road. Okay. Yeah. And if you look on the bottom, what is the best uh, range of the fuel you should be keep when you're traveling? For example, green is the good idea where you can see red, amber and green. So anything above half is always a good idea to keep in the car. Not trying to keep the car on the very low fuel all the time. 
then you can see the children are sitting on the uh, car seat in the child seat who is who is responsible for the seat parents what age what height child need a seat what child need a booster seat who is responsible for the seat belt are you allowed to face them towards the dashboard or away from the dashboard what can happen in the case of emergency how the airbag will explode and how much danger they can feel it yeah okay so this kind of things now the next one is called vehicle motor handling so again this is more like a let's say the picture number 1 this is more like a vulnerable places when people suddenly take the left turn so for example someone driving on your right lane and he get near the exit of the road like a slip road but he's late to identify yeah. it and he just want to do the last minute right and again where you can see that if you see the slip road which lane you should be on what you need to do if you see the triangle is telling you that hump is coming for one mile so be ready don't drive fast you slow down gradually so you car going to do a some kind of jumps yeah then they telling you the triangle that road is going downhill but 20% downhill that mean don't drive fast get yourself in a lower gear in a low speed early as possible and get a steady speed early as possible rather than doing the last minute breaks wow. then the next picture tell you about what best gear you should be do when you do up the hill or down the hills If yeah second row show you that uh, if you driving on the motorway in the night time how the lights of other car can dazzle you what light you are allowed to use it that your light should be dim light it should not dazzle other people if you see the couple sitting in the center picture they are dazzling with somebody light yeah what can happen in that case they can't see there is chances of accidents okay the next picture is about we don't have you know driving the car with manual so again maybe you don't understand it very quickly but if you drive the manual car you have a clutch and you don't press the clutch early than the brake you press the brake first then the clutch right. especially when you traveling down the hill you press the clutch down this is not safe this is called accosting okay it's called accosting yeah. so this is not good for the car the last picture you if you see is you can say weather is very foggy or you can say is very very bright right and again you cannot see what's coming up further that if you look on that picture you only can see the road little bit after that yeah. is very bright that you cannot see anything at all or it can be too foggy and you cannot see then you cannot drive fast on these kind of places unless you don't see properly right the choice of your speed will be slow the next picture where the car tire actually have a chains so means chains can help you it's called anti skid chains yeah which will help you to drive in the snow okay the weather for the snow right. so the next one is called a fog light front fog light back fog light that you must need to use the fog light if your visibility less than 100 meter in the foggy weather yeah okay so let's go next one 13 so that was your loading so when you travel the car how you carry the load with the car so for example if you going yeah. for a picnic you cannot do the unsecure loan or and secure load it should be proper uh secured loan if you using the box everything should be in the box properly secured box should be properly closed there nothing should be loose who can fall down and if you are not using anything that you must have to take the board off otherwise you using too much fuel of the car or you carrying the ex unnecessary load in your car then your tire pressure will be changed you have to do a new tire pressure in the car because you carrying a lot of load what is the maximum yeah. limit of your car to carry the load 
you're not making your card to go too low because the too heavy load you're carrying on, which is not even allowed. How many people you can carry in the car? How many load you can carry in the car? What you tow, when you tow the car with the caravan or uh, your uh, mobile home or any kind of tow thing, what is called a tow bar? Can you see the last picture is like uh, some black thing on the back of the car? Yeah. It's like a, call a tow rod. Th this is what you use to attach your any uh, caravan or trailer at the back. Can you see the picture on the back on the top with the red car? Is towing yeah. something. So he's using this thing to attach this with your car. Right. Okay. And if you look on the bottom pages, then this is called a secure load. They're carrying the load in the box. Not like a blue yeah. picture on the top where they're carrying with the rope only. Where the things can fall down very easily. Okay. So these kind of questions, they will ask you what is the safe thing you can do. Okay. Last one. Vulnerable road users. So in this one, first of all, you need to ask yourself who is more vulnerable on the road. And you must have to prioritize them in the same order. Yeah. So first one is kids, any animal, horse riders, yeah. motorbike, cyclist, disabled person. You can see the foxes, deer, dog, cat, pigeon, yeah. duck. Any, any cat on the road, certainly from any place. And where you normally see these kind of vulnerable people. Like for example, you can see the kids outside the school area. You can yeah. see the horse rider in the country lanes. You can see the yeah. cycle on the any kind of roads, motorbikes, disabled person you see nearby, maybe care homes, park, yeah. hospital. So see this picture again, when you see the cyclists on the road, how you find them vulnerable and what kind of driving choice you should be using behind them. The yeah. next picture where you can see the porthole and the cycle. So when you know there is a cycle lane and there's a porthole, how the cycle going to avoid the porthole and how come suddenly he can come in your lane and how quickly you have to swerve your cars to save him. The next picture is about the biker driving on the night time. So how is wearing the visibility jacket properly so people can see him easily? What if the other car going to diesel him with his light and he have to do like this and then he suddenly do something and you have to save him? Then can you see the learner car in the blue color on the first line? So learner car is also like a vulnerable car for other people on the road, how you identify the learner car and what things you can expect from them. Right. Can you see the pedestrian is hiding behind the learner car as well, trying to cross the road. Yeah. Okay. Now, second row, there's a uh, couple of horses in the country lane, how you will pass them. Right. Big distance, plenty of room, slow, no raves, no horn. Then you get that uh, cyclist on the roundabout. Even the cycle want to go right side of the roundabout, he still have to use the left side of the roundabout. Yeah. So he's more vulnerable because he's going to change some kind of lanes, but he cannot do it early. Then you got the people crossing the road. Right. Yeah. So you find them this before turning the car into the side road on the left or right. Then can you see the next picture? They, there's a one football coming on the center of the road suddenly. Yeah. So what you expect who is going to come after the football? A person. Yeah. So that's kind of vulnerable people. Then you can see the animal on the road like whales or Scotland. Yeah. Sheep, cow. Kettles, yeah. Then you can see the stop sign, lollipop lady outside the school. Yeah.
then you can see the blind or uh, maybe deaf person with a stake and a dog right. then you see the zebra crossing people are crossing near the zebra crossing yeah then you got school crossing in the last yeah yeah okay now this is all about 14 different topics you might going to get the question from so that was a give you the good idea that every type of the topic will come in your test right. so you always think like a driver all the time okay yeah. now look on the next portion this is called a hazard perception before you start the hazard perception test you will get three minutes break so when you think you have done your three minutes break then you can start your hazard perception test in the same day after the question answers they will show you 14 different clips in which you have to find the developing hazard yeah there will be some potential hazard as well in the clips you can also click on these hazards, but you will get marked down on the developing hazard and you must have to click the developing hazard. Soon you see them late. You click the less you get marks. The highest marks for good click is five late is zero and one. Okay. So again, there's a definition of what is the developing hazard. Now I can give you the idea of the developing hazard. Any yeah. hazard which force you to do some kind of action. That is your developing hazard. Yeah. Did you see the picture at the back? This one. The ball in the center of the car coming. Yeah. So someone came suddenly and he forced you to do the brake for him. Or yeah. the ball force you to do the brake. Sheep came in the middle of the road, force you to do the brake. Horses for for force you to slow down and do the brakes. Cycle force you to slow down to the brakes. Yeah. yeah. So anything which do it. So there is a video. I can see if it, it works. Can you see this video clip? Yeah. Thing is taking time or it's not working or maybe the system is slow okay i can jump on the next one <laughs> because it's not going to take time i can show you another clip you know i got another hazard perception video in uh, the youtube channel so we can use that one separately okay so now as i said when to click soon you see the developing hazard you click it you get five marks more yeah. you delay to click it you get four three two one and if you click it very late or when the developing hazard is too close to your car, you get zero marks. Okay. Now, if you try to cheat the system and keep clicking without even noticing the hazard perception or any developing hazard. Yeah. And you say like, okay, just keep clicking, 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 and then automatically you will be clicking on the hazard automatically by chance because there will be a hazard. So there is a system, it's called algorithm in the hazard perception. They will pick what you actually doing. So they will give you zero score and the message will pop up on your window. Say you click it so many times. Yeah. So you try not to do this. Okay. Only click when you see is a potential hazard or dangerous hazard or developing hazard. Okay. Now let's go to little summary what we have covered in this full presentation. Yeah. We had start talking about the theory test, the yeah. history, total number, how it design, who take it, where you take the test, how many minutes you get it. So total 731 question you can get. And out of that, you get only 50 random question in the test. Yeah. You get 57 minutes or roughly one hour 
So you spend not more than one minute on one question. For a safe site, 45 seconds is the best time to spend on one question. If you don't know the answer, you are, have a choice that you can flag the question and go to the next question and you can come back to the old one later. If you have yeah. a doubt. Okay. For the hazard, you get 14 topics in total out of which you get these questions randomly. It's better you practice all the topic separately, one by one. So practice one topic, then another topic, then another topic. Then does not yeah. matter how they will ask you the question, you will be able to answer them. Then for the hazard perception, you get 14 clips in total. Some clip have one hazard, some clip have two hazards in the same clip. They are real yeah. scenario clips. And they also are CGI clips, computer generated images. So they actually designed this clip just to test you. So they're not real, but some, some of them, they're real. You get the certificate of the test at the same day and you have to pass the both part at the same day. And the test certificate is valid for two years. Okay. Yeah. So the tips for your test, you make sure you arrive at the test center 15 minutes before the time they ask you to do it. Don't bring anything with you. Don't bring anybody else with you. You must have to do all the soft safety cautions for this coronavirus. Okay. So, so your mask, anything, and then they will give you the locker to put your stuff in the locker and you can get it from back. So there will be no mobiles, nothing. Okay. Yeah. You get the headphones. So it's better you use the headphone, listen the question before you give the answer. That will be the best way to understand the question. Okay. Yeah. And um, the app we use for teaching for like activity, we can do this activity now for 10 minutes. This is we call a theory test pro. This is called the website. We use it. And we can do some kind of mock test with you anytime you're ready. Yeah. If you also purchase your login on this website, then I can see your progress every time you see me again. Okay. Yeah. So again, this is my driving school website, MQW Driving School. That's my Facebook page. And this is my YouTube channel, MQW Driving School. So if you search on Google, you get all this easily to find the more informations yeah. okay thank you for the presentation but i give you that uh, sample for uh, one of the mock tests yeah Okay, just give me one second. Let me do this login. Right. Are you able to see the screen or not? Yeah. Okay. Are you on skill still on the 
presentation one yeah okay let me let me exit that one okay i'll give you the new screen share then It's little slow just because we're doing the screen sharing, so that's why it's just running little slow. Okay, can you see the screen now? Uh, no. Okay, just give some second. How about now? Okay, good. Now this is the website called Theory Test Pro. Yeah. Okay, so you can. Uh, they also give you the chance to do the free practice. Oh, yeah, I'm on this one. Okay. And then, yeah, and we can check your topic separately. So if you go to this multiple choice on the top, then you can uh, click this one on a multiple choice. And can you see the topic names separately? Yeah. So see, see like accident, 48 questions, alertness, 26, attitude, 39, document, 28, hazard, 78, water rules, 55, other vehicles, 22, road signs, 133, rules of the road, 67, safety margin, 34, Safety of your car, 78. Vehicle handling, 44. Motorcycle loadings, vehicle locking, 12. And vulnerable road user, 67. So if you look on the right hand side, they increase the total numbers now. Okay, now it's gone from 758 as total because they added the video clips on the top separately as a new thing now. So they give, yeah, so they give you one video. Yeah, they give you one video clip. And they will ask you different questions from the clip. So they give you, you the more real scenario to see first. Yeah. And then they ask you some question and then you need to give answer. Right. Okay. Then if you look on the top again, can you see my cursor, my hand cursor? Yeah. yeah. So this is a highway code book. You can read the book from here easily, separate, free. So, so this is the book. You don't need to find it anywhere. You can read the book from here. Introduction, rules, rule number 1 to 35, rule number 36 to 46. So this is all the book. Okay? Yeah. But again, when you give the question answer, you get the chance to read the book from there. Now you got the hazard perception clip. So when you get to the hazard perception, Then you start getting the clips. Then you see the mock test, practice clips. And this is a sample clip. 
Okay, so must watch the sample clip. Yeah. Okay, so let's come to the dashboard. They all look green because we done it so many times. So that's why looking green. Okay, and this is how you all the practice will show you on the bottom. Okay, so see this one. Activity yeah. activity will tell you that how many time you spending. Then even the breakdown test breakdown will tell you that how many places you have covered, which is left. It'll tell you how many attempts you done for your hazard clips, which one you pass, how much you score on the hazard, which video was CGI videos, and which one is a different videos. Yeah. So when we will clear from here, then we more over there as well. So let's say let's start let's just start the mock test. It's just a sample for quick one, okay? I don't want to, uh, to do the 51. I was thinking to give you the short one. Uh, Okay, for example, this one, right? Now, if you look on this one, they give you the 50 question like this. And can you see the time on the top? It started from 57 minutes. Uh, yeah. So you must have to keep an eye on your clock. Okay? Then you must need to see the time on the bottom of your computer, then how much time you have. Don't spend too long for one question, otherwise you will not finish all 50 questions in a good time. So what you do, first you read the question. You are driving a car that has a diesel engine, which can a loose filler cap on your fuel tank cause. So what can a loose filler cap on your fuel tank cause? So can you make a little picture in your mind what they're asking you? Okay, listen again, but you can do this play. You're driving a car that has a diesel engine. What can a loose filler cap on your fuel tank cause? It can make the engine difficult to start. It can make the roads slippery for other road users. It can improve your vehicle's fuel consumption. It can increase the level of exhaust emissions. Okay. So now the best way, first to make the picture what they're asking you. Now, you driving a diesel car, you, yeah. you fill some fuel from the petrol pump and you did not tight the fuel cap properly. Yeah. Did you ever heard about that if you don't cap the fuel or petrol or these kind of chemical, they evaporate? Yeah. Okay. Now, See the options and find the wrong options first. It can make the engine difficult to start. Now, what going to make a difference of the engine to start is nothing to do with the engine, isn't it? Yeah. So this is engine. If you have the fuel in the car, engine will start. So yeah. this is more about understanding your car. Now, if you look on the 14 topics, can you identify which topic is this one? It was in the last one somewhere about the vehicle and motor car. Is it about the loading, handling, or uh, and safety, vehicle safety? So which chapter they going to ask you these kind of questions? It's not a vulnerable road user, isn't it? This is not a traffic sign. No. So it's something about the car. Now, if it's about the car, is it about the car loading? They're not talking about loading. 
Is they talking about the car handling? No, they are not talking about the handling. Are they talking about the car um, safety? Yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of the car safety. The doors need to be closed. Seat need to be there. Seat belt need to be there. All these kind of things. Yeah. So first, yeah. first question was first option is not apply because if you have the fuel, car will start. Next option, it can make the road slippery for other road users. Did they say that your fuel is splitting on the road or spilling on the road? They didn't say this, isn't it? Yes. If you have a full tank and you on the humps and your car is keep jumping on the humps, yes, they can be overfilling and they can be drop on the floor and then it can be bad for the other road users. But they didn't. Yeah. They, but if you see the question, they didn't said anything. So that can be wrong. Yeah. Yeah. It can improve your vehicle fuel consumption. How it can improve? Or did ever fuel tank cap can improve the performance of your car? No. No. So all go wrong, wrong, wrong. So what's left? It can increase the level of exhaust emission means means your silencer will try to burn the fuel in a different way because air is also entering in the fuel tank yeah yes so that means it will burn the fuel in a different way and give a pollution in the air through the exhaust so it will dirty the pollution air pollution in the so it will increase the level so that mean that can be the answer right yeah. then you do click like this if you're not happy then you don't click it and just say flag right and then you go to the other one okay yeah. so you flag it you say you must provide the answer before you continue so i do this and I go next one. I will come back to this later if I have a doubt. Make sense? Yeah. And you can say remove flag. Okay. If you don't want to. Then you go to the next one. You are traveling in the left hand lane of three lane motorway. So now by motorway you should know which topic is this one. Motorway rules. Yeah. How should you react to the traffic joining from the slip road? Did I say the slip road is more vulnerable? People join suddenly. Yeah. Then after you read it once, then it's better you listen. You're traveling in the left-hand lane of a three-lane motorway. How should you react to traffic joining from a slip road? Increase your speed to ensure they join behind you. Adjust your speed or change lane if you can do so safely. Maintain a steady speed. Switch on your hazard warning lights. Okay, now let's go to find the wrong ones first. Increase your speed to ensure they they join behind you. Do you allow it to drive more than 70 on the motorway? No. So what you will do if you increase your speed? Danger, right? Yeah. Breaking the law. So that not possible. Okay, second choice. Adjust your speed or change lane if you can do so safely. Mm, yes, that is sensible answer, right? I yeah. can slow down a little bit and if I need it and if I can do easily, safely, I can change the lane, right? So the left car yeah. coming from the slip can come in the left lane and then we don't get hit by each other. Okay, I don't give the answer. I still want to read all of them okay yeah. number three maintain a steady speed that means i'm not doing anything right so that's not very yeah. safe thing switch on your hazard warning light what time we are allowed to switch on the hazard warning light when we when yeah that break down the car or something so that's not a choice that's not possible. That's not safe. So think that means the second question 
I was thinking that's the same question, right? When I'm happy, I'll go to the next one. Now, does it make sense? Yeah. Now, what does third party insurance cover? So now they're talking about the documents. So this question is from your documents now. Okay. So again, when you will read the documentation, then you will know the rules of the document. Okay. Right. For example, what does the third party insurance cover? That means what is the third party insurance policy cover? Damage to your vehicle. As you say, third party. So it's something about others, not for you. So when they say damage to your vehicle, so that means they're not talking about you. They're talking about third party. So that's not yeah. good. Damage to other vehicle. Mm, that's possible. Other party, third party is the other people. So that means damage to other vehicles. Yeah. Okay. I'll leave it on. Injury to yourself. Again, they're talking about third person. So all damage and injury. So they didn't take on. So only one answer is related to the third party equal to other. So that's like English in English equal same words. Okay. That's it. I don't know to flag. I'm hundred percent sure. I'll go to the next one. The next say the fluid level in your battery is low. What fluid you should use to top it up. So now again, they're talking about your car, something about safety of your car. Like a daily basis check. You remember the cockpit drill and control we did? Yeah. So this is the question they're talking about. Okay. So I can leave this one. So when you will finish your test, then you can say, I'm done, I'm done, and I'm done. And then the test will finish. Right. Okay. So let's go to the back to the dashboard. This is the sample question answer I gave you that this is how it works. And then we will keep checking your separately, but the best way when you do topic by topic, then that topic, you only get same kind of questions. So for example, let's open the documents. Yeah. Then when you say practice the document, then only the document question will come in front of you. So now when I say begin the test, so now it will only give me document questions. All the question will be about documents, document, 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 nothing. And when you will do the practice on the bottom, they tell you the what's written down in the book as a law. So see the knowledge and understanding. So you can read the question, see the, all the options first, see which answer is not correct at all like negative ones, find the close answer in your mind, then open this in the bottom and then read third party insurance cover is usually the cheapest than the comprehensive cover policy, right? However, it does not cover any damage caused to your vehicle. So nothing to relate to you or property. It only cover damage and injury to the other people. Then you're able to give the right answer on the top easily, which we already said this one. And when you will yeah. do the check answer, it will give you your answer is okay. Correct. And then you will jump to the next one. So that way you're reading the book, you're doing the practice topic by topic separately. And yeah. then you're checking your full knowledge randomly questions like 50 questions randomly. And that is how you will do the full practice by using this one quick practicing. And then you back to the dashboard and see it will give you when you practice finish it, it tell you like this. So you give one out of 100% score. You only did one question and you was okay. Your percentage of the two days practice. Okay. And then you can go back to the topics yeah. and then you can choose the different topic again and it should be all green like this before you say, I do the real mock test. Yeah. 
So yeah. first you do separately, topic by topic. When they all green, if you keep giving the wrong answer, start again, start again, start again, start again. And then once you all green, which means you can, you are ready for the next topic. Once your one topic is full green, then go for the next topic. When your topic is green, when you all have a green, then you start the real mock test. And then that mock test you need to keep trying to pass. Then you're fully ready for your theory test. All right. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to do the stop sharing. So yeah. So how you find this now? The full understanding of your theory, a little bit sample question, how you cover the topics, how you read the topics, even you reading through the books, you read them chapter by chapter. And then you practice only one chapter at one time. Okay, so any question before we go? No. <laughs> good, good, it's fine. Okay, I'm going to do this one second. Let me do this uh, stop.